Dennis and Jim, those guys, I was sitting in the back, by the way, so I said all those questions. Um, I was listening to all those questions and all those guys done a great job. I'm gonna try to try to hit a couple of points um, that they did may not have covered, but they've covered quite a bit. And we want to say about this this league is this opportunity for not only the players but for some coaches. And I I was really really taken when Michael asked me to be the coach of the New York slash Hartford franchise. And I, and I just said, all my coaching career, I have worked so hard to try to get an opportunity to become a head coach in the National Football League, and it never happened. And for, for a moment there, for a point there, I said, well, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. But through a lot of just getting down and, and saying prayers at night and just saying, hey, Heavenly Father, this, you know what's best for me. If I'm going to get this chance, I'll just leave it up to you. And it happened. And I was so grateful for that opportunity. And just like a lot of this opportunity, just like it happened for me, it's going to happen for a lot of these players that may be overlooked, like the guys have talked about before, may be overlooked, they just can't get the job, they can't get in the camp. And there's a lot of players out there, believe me guys. Because I went to a, I went to a small college, by the way, up in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. You never heard of it, it's called Delaware Valley College, most of you. It's Division Three school. I call it so small, I call it 3AA. We had 1,200 students. I was fortunate enough to get drafted by the Atlanta Falcons where they had a good career. I was fortunate enough to get drafted. But there were some other players, a couple other players that I played with, I thought should have, they could have played in the league. And one of them was the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he went down to the last cut, a big running back. If he was coming out today, he may get a chance with this league to fulfill that dream that I had the opportunity to go on to play with the Atlanta Falcons. But that's just a case point where guys are overlooked. And there's another one. In, in the same conference, there was a guy running around. Matter of fact, he was going out washing cars for the Philadelphia Eagles in the training camp. It's like, and one of the area scouts kept begging team general manager and the scouts to give this guy a tryout. I've seen him play. I've seen him play. Well, he's from Widener College. And that's a level of competition. But he's right here. We can, we can work him out. Give him an opportunity. They don't do it. You know who that player was? Billy White Shoes Johnson. Pretty good player, huh? He got an opportunity. Small school. So there's, there were a lot of players out there who are overlooked at these the Division I the way, uh, these Division II, some Division III schools, and plus the ones that are not drafted or from the, from the bigger schools. They've got the ratings, but they only get seven rounds to pick. They don't pick them. So here, here we are, the ninth football. Now, the other thing about this is that uh, I coached a long time at Rutgers University. Metal bands. Now they have a new stadium for the Giants and the Jets are going to share it right across from the old one. At the, it's in the same area. Those tickets, prices are so high. A lot of kids over in Newark, New Jersey can see that in New, in New York City and in, in up in, up in uh, Manhattan, Harlem, the Bronx. They look over there to see that stadium. They'll never be able to afford ticket. Think about that. They can't, they sit in, within, some of them within a stone throw of this venue, they can't go in and watch it. A game that they love to see. Because the ticket prices out of sight. Family can't afford it. And you think about that with a kid growing up. 
the impact that has on. I want to go see this dad, can you take me? Son, these hard times, no. Oh! Look over that other team. What's that little team playing? They're playing in the city? How much are the tickets? Look it up, 20 bucks. Let's go. Here we are, nine football league. Work together. And, and it's the, the cooperation you can see uh, in these meetings. I wish you guys could had access to them. It was fantastic. The plan that they have, they've gone through uh, stages, what the, the model, what's going to look like, what's our future. Logistics, how, how are we going to do this? How are we going to travel? The insurance, everything. Players, how are we going to get them? How are we going to get them? Plans, everything's been planned out. And it's a very, it's an outstanding uh, venture that I know is going to succeed. I know it's going to succeed. Questions? Question. Um, going into uh, one of the major markets with an upstart league, do you think that there's any special? Yeah, they're not market, but they're over on the other side of the, the tunnels. We're on the other, we're on the east side of the tunnels. They're on the west side of the tunnels and the bridges. So they're down, and they can get, they can take the subway to our city. And there's many, there's been millions and millions of people, like I mentioned before, uh, in the boroughs, and lots of them can't afford to go to a game, the Giants or the Jet game. And the ones, and then also there are some, like out in Long Island, who if they want to go over through the tunnels, to the Midtown Tunnel and across the bridges and expressway, it's some, it's talking about a two hour commute. So I think, I think that's gonna work in our favor that we'll be within the uh, city and under the boroughs and that this is the access get to the stadium would be planned, it'd be a lot easier for, huge population.